which is the best 360 camera under $1,000. In this video, we'll look at the top contenders in mid 2019, figure out which one is best for you, as well as rank them from best to worst. I'm also going to give you three predictions for 360 cameras that I think will be out by the end of the year. I have no allegiance to any of these cameras. I'm not being paid by any companies to make this. I'm just a dude in the front room of his apartment who you could say has a little bit of an obsession. And this obsession led me to owning basically every single point and shoot 360 camera ever made. I have made in-depth reviews of most of these cameras so if you have your eye on one specific camera do check out my in-depth review before you make that purchase. This video will be more of an overview of what's good and what's not. So here are the top 17 contenders in mid 2019. Let's do it. Now I'm going to start with the newest 360 camera of the lot and that's the Ricoh Theta Z1. This is a $999 360 camera with two inbuilt one inch sensors which is the very first 360 camera to ever have this. And as a result, the image quality is incredible. This is the most DSLR like point and shoot 360 camera I've seen so far. And the manual control you can take over this is insane. It does the best raw photos. It has the best bracketing with the most amount of control over how you set your exposure and the amount of brackets you use, but it's not cheap. $999 is out of most people's price range. So if you're a professional shooting virtual tools, you should consider this and go watch my review. If you're not, there are other cameras on this list that will do a good enough job. I'm putting the Theta Z1 straight into the buy category. Next is Ricoh's other camera and that's the Theta V. In my previous video, I knocked the Theta V out entirely because I thought they were going to release a new updated version of the Theta V. They did release the Theta Z1. However, the Z1 is more for professionals. They're not really in the same category because of the massive price difference, which is why the Theta V is still a decent option for consumers. At $376 still, this is still worth that much money, but it's not a camera that screams, buy me. And it used to be when it first came out, but the 360 camera market has at least doubled since then, which is why it's no longer an obvious choice. I'm putting the Theta V in the cameras you should consider list for the excellent image quality and dynamic range at a decent-ish price. The Theta cameras have always been amazing for inbuilt HDR, so if you choose one of these, you won't be disappointed. Next are the two Gear 360s, the 2016 and the 2017, and the only thing these two have over the other cameras right now is price. They've been outshined in almost every way and they're cameras of the past. Back when these came out, there was only like five cameras to choose from it. So of course they were the best. But now in 2019, they belong in a museum. The prices are actually really good. And yes, I would say these are the best acceptable 360 cameras for the lowest amount of money. So if you only have like a hundred bucks to spend, I'd consider getting the Gear 360 2016 because the 2017 is now $165, whereas the 2016 is $109. And by the way, this actually does shoot 30 megapixel photos, so it's good for that. But as I said before, it's outdated in every other way. Also, you'll need a Samsung phone to use it. So while it's still an okay option, I feel kind of meh about it. So I'm gonna put it on the meh list. With the 2017, I'm taking it off the list. Do not buy the 2017 version because there are much better options now that are kind of close to this price point. Like this one, the Yi 360 VR shoots 5.7K video and it's $199. I used this one for a few weeks, but as a Mac and iPhone user, it was a no-go. It was unusable because there wasn't enough software and app support. The footage didn't stabilize. Also, I had massive dynamic range issues. This is probably the worst dynamic range I've ever seen from a 360 camera. But if you only have $200 to spend and you're on PC and Android, this is an okay option. I didn't end up making a review about it, but if you're interested in the Yi 360 VR, check out the reviews of my fellow 360 guys because I'm pretty sure they all made in-depth reviews. So I'm gonna put this on the cameras you should consider list purely for the price, but as a Mac user, you're dead to me. <laughs> That'll teach it. A camera that I think would be a much better option at this price point is the Xiaomi Mi Sphere. This has been at the top of my list for a long time now, and yeah, it still stood the test of time. I can see heaps of people in the Facebook groups are still using the Mi Sphere and getting amazing photos and videos from it. No, wait a sec, just photos. For videos, it's now really substandard because it started as a 3.5K camera and then they updated it to 4K, but it's interpolated 4K, so it looks fake and it just, it doesn't look great compared to basically every other camera out there that shoots 4K or above. But for photos, it shoots 23 megapixels and I use this camera a lot in my previous virtual tour videos and I got some really good results with it. This is one of the sharpest 360 cameras you'll find for photos. The dynamic range is okay and the raw kind of sucks, but if you're shooting in an environment with controlled lighting like outside or inside, just avoid mixed lighting interiors. The camera's gonna do just fine. In fact, it's going to over deliver for the $220 price point it's currently at. So if your budget is under 
under $250 for a 360 camera, the Xiaomi Mi Sphere is still my 360 camera of choice. Yes, you should definitely consider the Mi Sphere. But first, let's look at some better cameras at a slightly higher price point. One of the most exciting ones is the GoPro Fusion. This camera has consistently made the top three of this list ever since it was released. And back then it was way more expensive. I remember I paid $1,000 for my GoPro Fusion and then it went down slowly to 900, then 800, then 700, which is still kind of high, but the image quality from this thing has always been worth it. The 360 videos I've shot with the GoPro Fusion around the world have been incredible. It was one of the first cameras ever to go above 5k video resolution and as a result it was one of the first 360 cameras to look like genuine high definition when reframed up until that point 360 video from these cameras looked kind of blurry and crap and the fusion really led the way for amazing 360 video quality however it also became known as one of the most difficult 360 cameras to work with you use two sd cards with the fusion and importing your files stitching them exporting them editing them and reframing them is like a week long process if you have a slow computer. And this made it difficult for a lot of people to use the Fusion. If you have a computer that's specced out to the max like I do, this won't be an issue for you and it is worth it to get that amazing video quality. But if you're someone that prefers a mobile workflow, then the Fusion is going to disappoint you because the app is not that good. You still can't download your 360 photos to the camera roll and reframing your 360 video in the app is almost impossible to do while keeping it smooth. It has nowhere near the reframing ability as some of the other cameras on this list. The good is they've updated the video resolution from 5.2k to 5.6k and they've decreased the price. I saw this on Amazon for $299. That's incredible. For what this camera can do, damn that's cheap. And did I mention it's also waterproof? Look, no question the GoPro Fusion is still in the buy category in mid 2019. This is an amazing 360 camera at an unbeatable price. If you can get around the hurdle of having to edit on desktop, then this is going to be one of the best options if you're into shooting 360 video. But I'm warning you, you'll need a fast computer. Next is a little camera that used to be the Fusion's main competitor and that's the Rilo. When the Rilo came out, it kind of changed the industry with its game-changing video stabilization. The six-axis stabilization was pretty much perfect. It didn't matter how much you shaked the camera, somehow it found a way to stabilize the footage and look like a cinematic dolly shot. And us folk in the 360 world were like, damn, that's impressive. And then a little company came along called Insta360 and copied Rilo's homework. This was one of their leading cameras at the time, the Insta360 Nano, and they found a way to replicate the stabilization from the Rilo and they put it in this little camera. And then suddenly the secret was out and Rilo lost its unique selling point. And while there have been updates to Rilo in the past year with their firmware, their software, and the most important one, they've upscaled their resolution from 4K to 5.8K, which is a massive jump. It's still got a tiny little problem and that is no unique selling point. When you and I go out to buy ourselves a new camera, do we think, I wanna buy a camera that's just like all the other cameras, that doesn't have any unique features, it has the same resolution or less, it has an inferior app, it has inferior overall specs, and even the price is the same as the other cameras. Is that what you're thinking? No, you want a camera that's better than the other cameras at at least one thing, just one thing. And yeah, if there were two or three or four or 10 or 50 things, that would be awesome too. But even one thing would be good. And if a camera doesn't have a unique selling point, it can at least be unique with the price. It can be cheaper than all the others. Well, I'm sorry to say Rilo, but you have no things that are unique selling points. So therefore Rilo, I'm sorry, but I'm putting you in the meh category and you're just on the cusp of the do not buy list. And you'll be there next time if you keep this up. Next is the Kandal KuCam, which is a 180 camera that also doubles as a 360 camera. It has two lenses on one side, one on the other. This is also a camera whose unique selling points are dwindling, but it does still have a few. The first one is it has the longest battery life of the lot. On a single charge, this thing can last three hours of continuous recording. That's a long time. Looks weird there. Also, it's the second best camera for shooting RAW after the Theta Z1. It shoots incredible DNG8 photos in both 360 and 180 mode. Here it is halfway between 180 and 360 mode, so I'm gonna call that 240 mode. 
In 180 mode, it captures a depth map and that means it knows how far everything is from the camera. So it can then simulate that later. If you're uploading your photo to Facebook, you can upload a full on 3D photo shot with the KuCam. Then you just move your mouse around and the 3D effect comes to life. Yes, they're low quality simulated 3D photos, but no other camera has this feature yet. I'd say the KuCam is a good camera, but not a great camera. When I compared it to the Vuz XR and Insta360 Evo, it came third out of the three. So I'm going to put this on the camera you should consider this with the main selling point being that incredible battery life. A better option for a 360 slash 180 camera hybrid is the Vuz XR. I think this is the best designed 360 180 camera yet. Where this is an upgrade from the KuCam is it's 5.7K, whereas the KuCam is only 4K. I really like the design of this camera because since the lenses are on one side, you can easily hold the handle and your hand isn't going to show in your 180 shots. The Vuz XR is a good choice for a 360 slash 180 camera, but there's something better. We'll find out what that camera is in a minute, but for now I'm putting the XR on the cameras you should consider list. I feel like a news presenter. This is 360 News with Ben Claremont. Just in. Some idiot has just totaled his 360 camera at Bondi Beach. His name is Ben Claremont. What? This leads me to the other Vuz camera, and this is the Vuz Plus 3D 360 camera. Yes, it has eight lenses total, and it shoots 3D in all directions, whereas the Vuz XR just shoots 3D in one direction. It's in 4K, the footage looks okay, and I don't even know if the app is finished a year after release, but this is the cheapest 3D 360 camera you can currently buy. Would I recommend it? Well, I'll let the dust on the top of the camera be an indicator of that. But if you are someone that wants to try 3D 360, then this is going to be your best option. So I'm gonna be generous. I won't put it on the meh list. I'll put it on the cameras you should consider list. But really you wouldn't buy it for any other purpose than 3D 360 at 4K. Next is the Old Tracker Aleta S2C. I did make a video about this, but since then the price has changed. It's gone back up to 1200 and something dollars, which means it's not eligible for this list. So as much as I would like to include it, and if I did, I'd put it in the meh category, but I can't. So forget you even saw this. And the reason I would have put it in the meh category is because now with the Theta Z1, this is no longer the best option in the $1,000 price range for virtual tours. The Theta Z1 has incredible dynamic range and the Aleta S2C has very average, if not below average dynamic range. Yes, the resolution is 52 megapixels, but that doesn't matter when the highlights are completely blown out, the shadows are crushed, and there's visible noise in a lot of your shots. So yes, yeah, sorry Aleta, there's a new king that's taken the throne. I don't watch Game of Thrones, by the way. I, I think that's how it works, right? The new person takes the throne after they defeat the old one. That was a very expensive battle. Oh, hello, it's the Garmin Verb. I'm afraid to say the Verb has suffered the same fate as the Rilo. It has no unique selling points really, other than I guess the replaceable lenses. That's one thing, but it's not enough because the price hasn't changed. It's still at $560. And for that price, you could basically buy two Fusions. So yeah, sorry Verb, it's not me, it's you. You did good kid, you did good. But now it's time to put you in retirement you're going on the do not buy list. I feel like there's a company whose cameras I haven't mentioned. Who could it be? Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was Insta360. I've got four cameras here, the Nano S, the One, the One X, and the Evo. And I'm gonna start by taking out the trash. The Nano and the Insta360 One are no longer cameras you should consider buying. They were good when they came out, but because Insta360 release cameras so frequently and the updates are quite significant, these cameras have no unique selling points over these two. So yeah, don't buy these cameras. Should you buy the One X and the Evo? Yes, of course you should, and here's why. When the One X was released last year, it became known as the 360 camera killer. It absorbed all of the best features of its main competitors, making it the obvious choice for anyone wanting anything from a 360 camera. You could probably find it with the One X. The photo quality was great, the video quality was great, and the amazing app was the icing on the cake. Before this thing came out, editing 5.7K video on a phone just wasn't possible. But somehow they found a way, and not only is it possible, but it's actually really easy. They designed the app for the One X so good that you simply tap, swipe, pinch, and drag to create amazing reframed 360 masterpieces. And you didn't even need a cable, the download speeds were crazy fast. Well, since they released it, they've added more and more 
and more features, making it the obvious choice for anyone looking for a 360 camera for photo or video with a budget of under $500. There's so many features I could talk about right now with the One X, but I won't do it here. Check out my other videos about the One X to find out exactly what they are. But I'll just say this is the most versatile 360 camera ever made, and I've used it every single day since I got it. This is a $400 360 camera that gives $1,000 worth of value, and it seems to be getting better and better as time passes. Enter the Insta360 Evo, which was released about six months after the One X and has 99% of the features that the One X has, with an added feature that it also doubles as a 180 camera. This is 180 mode and this is 360 mode. In 360 mode, it makes the design kind of clunky compared to the One X, but I found the image quality to be identical. It's got all of the One X's insides in a newly designed body. But in 180 mode, it also doubles as the best consumer 180 camera money can buy right now. So it's two cameras in one, whereas the One X is obviously just one camera. So you need to decide whether you like the idea of shooting 3D 180 or if you're a pure 360 shooter and you couldn't care less about 180. Because if you only plan on shooting 360, then the One X is going to be the better choice because it's designed slightly better for 360. It's just easier to put in your pocket and use in everyday situations because the design is really simple and user-friendly. The Evo is $30 more and while the design isn't as good, the 3D you can shoot with this thing is incredible and worth every cent. For a more detailed breakdown of the differences between these two, check out my review of the Insta360 Evo. But I've got to say, I get asked the question, which 360 camera should I buy several times a day? And my answer 99% of the time is the Insta360 One X. The quality you get for the price paid is just insane. And I don't think I've come across a single person that has regretted buying this camera. The One X and Evo go right to the top of the cameras you should buy list. So here are my four winners. And hey, this is just my opinion. You might have a different one. So if you do, leave a comment down there and let me know which is your favorite 360 camera in mid 2019 and why. And yeah, definitely check out my in-depth reviews of these cameras if any of these or the others took your fancy. I'm going to remake this exact video again on New Year's Day 2020. So hit that subscribe button to make sure you can be the first to see it. And now I get to put my clairvoyant skills to the test and tell you three cameras I think will be released by the end of 2019. The first one is the successor to the GoPro Fusion. Nick Woodman has already confirmed that GoPro will be continuing with their 360 camera developments and it seems like a Fusion 2 is in the works. And yeah, that would kind of explain the massive price drop out of nowhere. The challenge will definitely be improving on the Fusion. The image quality and video quality is already incredible. So for this to be a significant upgrade, it will have to be something like six to 8K 360 video, which is gonna be interesting because for that resolution, we'll probably come a higher price point and to sell a camera at a higher price point given where GoPro are at now seems like a counterintuitive move. You know, since now they've got a competitor in town with the Osmo Action. So if they're like, hey, here's a $2,000 camera, no one's gonna buy it. Which is why I think it's probably going to be closer to 6K resolution and it's going to be much cheaper and user-friendly. This just ain't workable for so many people. So they need a much easier workflow with their new camera that hopefully makes it more consumer-friendly and more of a genuine competitor to the other action cameras out there, as well as the other 360 cameras. Release date is currently scheduled for the end of the year. My second prediction is a new Theta camera. I know they did just release the Theta Z1, but it wasn't what we were expecting. We were expecting a Theta V2 and we didn't get it. You know how two years ago they released the Theta S and then something like six months to a year later, they released the Theta SC, which was a cheaper, simpler version of the original camera. Well, I'm predicting the same thing for the Theta Z1. I feel like, or maybe I'm just fantasizing, that they're going to release something more consumer friendly and by consumer friendly, I mean the price is more consumer friendly. They've already got an excellent product here, but it's just overpriced. Although Ricoh do seem kind of slow with their camera releases, so I wouldn't hold your breath. My final prediction is for the Insta360 One X2, or the One2, or the One Y, or One Z. Let's just call it the One X2 for now. But something I can say with a good amount of certainty is Insta360 have a pattern for their camera releases. They release at least one major camera a year, as well as one secondary camera. First it was the Insta360 4K, then the Nano, then the One, then the Nano S, 
then the One X, and then Evo. All of those releases were about six months apart. So will they be working on their next 360 camera right now? Yes, of course they will be. When will it be released? I don't know, probably before Christmas. How much of an improvement will it be? Well, that's a tough one because they have an almost perfect camera already. And it's hard to see them going up too much in resolution because it's at 5.7K resolution right now. Yes, I guess technically they could go up to 8K, but that means it's no longer going to be a smartphone friendly camera because a lot of phones just can't handle 8K video. So that's gonna be a massive limitation for all 360 cameras really to go up to 8K it will mean they become desktop only cameras. So I'm thinking the video resolution will be around 6K and the bigger improvement will be with the photo resolution. Hopefully we get up to 30 megapixels or more and just better overall image quality. That way we don't have to give up our mobile workflow which is kind of what Insta360 cameras are all about. I've just started a rumor, <laughs> But I wouldn't let that stop you from buying the One X or Evo now because we just don't know what they're thinking. I could be completely wrong. You know what, I probably am wrong, but I hope I'm not. Whatever the next camera is we'll likely see it in the next edition of this video and by the way I'm only doing this video once every six months now instead of three months I just found there weren't enough releases every three months to justify doing it over and over and over and over and over and yeah you get the point if you're new to shooting 360 and you want to speed up the learning curve I wrote an ebook called a beginner's guide to tiny planet photography and I made a video course called a beginner's guide to 360 video and I made these specifically with the intention of teaching you everything you need to know to get started in under a day so after you've chosen yourself a camera those two things will show you how to use it now if you'll excuse me i've got a plane to catch i'm going to be on the road for the next two months with the aim of making my best content yet both tutorials and 360 content so be sure to follow me on instagram and facebook to see what i'll be up to which cameras will i be packing you might be asking well i think it's obvious by now these four the four in the buy category and why well firstly the one x for day-to-day -day 360 photos and videos the evo when i want to shoot a bit of 3d and 180 the gopro fusion when i'm in the water and want to shoot all some underwater content and the Theta Z1 when I just need incredible image quality. I'm gonna be shooting a few virtual tours while I'm away, so this is the perfect camera to do so. All right, well, my friends and I best be going. So yeah, see you in the next video. A little